Okay, we're back over here on the bench uh, trying to troubleshoot this power supply a little bit. And I just thought I'd take it kind of power supply section by section. And uh, this is the uh, bridge rectifier circuit here, uh, made up of four discrete diodes right here, uh, kind of on this five lug terminal strip right here. That ultimately then the red wire feeds over into this point and into this uh, multi section cap. It has four 75 microfarad sections in it at 75 volts and then this this wire here leads over kind of to the negative uh, of the can per se um, so what I want to do is let me show you this the uh, if you notice I've got my scope here on 10x um, connected basically to the output here across this red wire of the uh, the bridge here and this is what I'm seeing on the output and uh, I'll be honest with you it's not exactly what I'd like to see. This thing's pretty dirty, if you'll notice. Uh, kind of choppy. It's not a uh, nice uh, full rectified uh, signal like I'd like to see. So what I'm going to do is uh, basically I think I'm going to come down here and replace these uh, four discrete diodes and see if I can clean up that uh, rectification a little bit there. And if that gets clean, then I'll go over here and uh, start dissecting a little bit in this power supply section here. But before I do that, let me show you what I did here. I basically took and, uh, you know, this is the back side of my schematic that I printed out. And uh, what I've got here, lots of notes that I've taken. Basically, uh, I documented each of the capacitors here. Um, so I don't have to keep flipping this chassis upside down to look at the, uh, the cans on the caps there. And this is, uh, basically I drew this little five lug, one, two, three, four, five lugs there. Uh, terminal strip that's the uh, the same as this and then I drew the diodes in in correct polarity uh, you got one going from uh, terminal one here all the way down to terminal five and you can see I've got the polarity of the diodes in place and then the output here I kind of got this one going to the uh, to the uh, can cap and the uh, positive one feeding over here to this resistor um, to actually provide the positive power so let's um Let's dive in and replace those uh, um, diodes and see if that helps any. Let's take a look at uh, troubleshooting this power supply a little bit. Coming off the uh, the rectifier tube here, the uh, GZ34, kind of feed around into a resistor which drops down. Um, coming into this point, which there's then a red wire that feeds over here and connects to the uh, kind of the, um, the moon shaped lug here on this capacitor. And likewise, then uh, another dropping resistor gets you over to another lug, and then this dropping resistor to another lug, etc. So in other words, you're just getting different voltage points off of this thing. And uh, I'm going to show you something about this real quick. Likewise, um, kind of feeding out of the other part of the transformer here, it goes into a bridge rectifier circuit right here with um, four diodes making up a bridge. And uh, feeding out of it, kind of the negative here and the positive here. Um, goes over into basically another little um, set, uh, can capacitor and in it is four 75 microfarad sections so one two three four and if you'll notice it's got these 18 ohm resistors dropping across to each one to basically get you to the other side here these two wires one of which feel, uh, feeds the center wiper here on the um, on the bias pots for the output tubes. The other which um, ultimately feeds um, the all four filaments on the front set of tubes here um, in, that are in series. So uh, kind of 48 volts dropped across four of those is 12 volts each and then there's two sections in each at six volts. So uh, that's what that's providing. But let me show you what we got going on. Okay, we've got the trusty uh, Tektronics uh, scope on here. Got a probe down here. Um, going to hook this probe up on this section right here, which is the, uh, the first one kind of feeding off of the, uh, the trans um, coming off of the rectifier here. Let me turn this thing on and let you see what happens here. It'll take it just a minute. But... Um, The tube's warming up, the GZ34. Give it just a second here. Yeah, there's what we got coming off of this thing. Um, 
pretty not only an ugly spike but you can also see the uh, this whole thing's off kind of oscillating probably at 60 Hertz would be my guess um, so we'll show you more about that in just a second so I moved the scope probe over to uh, another um, section in the cap here and if you'll notice up here pretty decent little uh, flat DC signal here and uh, similarly as I move this thing around and then come up here pretty flat signal so uh, the second the third and the I'll get on the fourth section here all pretty flat but if I go back over here to this first section here um, pretty ugly so uh, let's move uh, on to the next section of this uh, amplifier which will actually be this uh, the part here that feeds the filaments if you'll notice here when I kind of connect to the first section uh, we've got some ugliness same with the uh, second section right here still pretty ugly I can get all the way over here to the, even the last section in this uh, thing which should have the most amount of rectification and boy my wires are getting all in the way hang on okay even here on the last section that's ultimately feeding over to the uh, the filaments of these input tubes the very front end of this tube and the uh, and the bias here on the outputs as you can see is still pretty ugly there for what's supposed to be a DC signal so I can come over here to let's just say the center wiper on uh, on any of these uh, the output bias here and you can see we still got the uh, the ugliness so I'm going to try to tackle those two things let's tackle this one first and then we'll kind of move to this one okay we're going to tackle this uh, capacitor setup first you notice this thing has um, uh, five of these 18 ohm resistors um, kind of going around it and um, you notice over here this is another um, 222C just like it and uh, it's only got uh, four here and the schematic calls for four so um, something's a little off somebody's been mucking around on this thing and uh, has tried to you can tell you see the big globs of solder here and here um, down in here at any rate um, this is a um, this capacitor has four 75 ohm sections in it and each one is kind of bridged with a um, with an 18k ohm resistor so I've got a bunch of 18k ohm 2 watt resistors here that I picked up and I've got a bunch of uh, 75 um, microfarad capacitors that we're going to put in parallel here on this thing and uh, we're basically going to replace this whole capacitor by uh, building something and mounting it right in here to take its place. Oh, I thought I'd show you what I'm doing. So we've got these uh, 75 ohm 150 volt caps. If you remember the ones in the original here, you know, this can cap underneath right here. 75 microfarads at 75 volts and uh, anytime you go higher in voltage that's fine. Um, just uh, it's the microfarad value that really counts. So um, if you can see here what I've done, I've kind of tagged these things all together on a bus here. And you may be wondering why I've not tied the negative ones together instead of tying the positive ones together. Let me show you something. Okay, this is on the other unit that I had laying around. Um, if you'll notice 75, 75, 75, 75, etc. But what does it say right here? Common positive can. <laughs> you notice this thing is mounted up on a uh, like a uh, fiber board here so that the uh, the lugs of it don't actually touch the chassis and the reason for that is it's uh, this can is actually uh, hot <laughs> so uh, we got to tie the uh, positives together and not the negatives uh, as you would normally see in a in a can like this typically uh, you know one like this or whatnot the can is negative and all the leads uh, coming out of it are positive so uh, must be producing a negative supply here and uh, that's why it's like this and as you can see here we've got the uh, the positives all tied together commonly and in between each section of the capacitor here we've got an 18 ohm 2 watt resistor and then leading off of the uh, the final one here on the end we've got an 18 ohm 2 watt resistor and let me show you over here how that compares to uh, in the original unit as you can see here one two 
three four sections the same as we just built all connected with an uh, 18 ohm resistor in between them here as you can see and then one on the very end here one final one coming off that actually ends up connecting over to the bridge rectifier here and that's the same spot I'm going to connect that other one to. So we built basically the exact same circuit using new modern components. Okay, we've got it all wired in here. The uh, four capacitors uh, tucked underneath here. I'll end up using just a little bit of two-sided tape or um, maybe a little bit of silicone to hold these things down. Uh, they're in there pretty snug, but I don't want them moving around as you shake the amp. And uh, all the wires are wired in, wired in now nice and neat where they're supposed to go. And uh, you can see that last little um, resistor here comes off ties and goes to the bridge rectifier here. But uh, we'll turn it on here and um, see what we get out of this. I know I uh, don't think this is, was the problem, but uh, I definitely was having some um, less than stellar readings on those capacitors. So as you can hear, we still got some hum. a little bit of noise in the, in the whole signal path so we're going to jump back here and work on this one as well. All right, I've got a oscilloscope probe on the output of this thing. Um, as you can see a fairly flat signal. That's a, it's a DC signal with just a little bitty bit of AC ripple on it. Not much at all considering the, uh, the power supply built here. That's, that's not bad at all for what we're seeing. Let's, let's measure the voltage. Alright, got the black probe here on, stuck into a screw hole for ground. Got the negative hooked at the furthest end of the connection where the actual leads feed off to the uh, to this hum pot and to feed all four of these tubes in parallel. And what do we have? We have 48 volts DC here. So, uh, if you think about each tube, 4 times 12. Um, it's 48 and each tube has two 6 volt sections in it so um, that's that's about right for these tubes here and, uh, and now you can see why we needed the uh, common um, positive because it's a negative supply here but it's not bad at all and if we take the meter and flip it over from volts AC to volts DC we can measure the DC component on that and if you'll see here there's very little if any um, DC, I mean uh, AC signal riding on top of that DC voltage there. Got 48 volts DC and uh, really to speak of no AC riding on top of that so really a good uh, nice clean power supply for the uh, for the front tubes there and it provides uh, bias voltage here for the output tubes. Okay let me show you a couple things. Um, so once we got this power supply figured out, and if you'll remember, we had a really ugly signal feeding these uh, tubes before um, we replaced this capacitor. And after I replaced it, I still had a hum, and I thought, well, maybe that wasn't it. Well, actually it was it. Um, let me show you what else I found. So two things. One, this thing from the factory had an uh, 80 ohm resistor right here and actually a 10 10 watt 80 ohm resistor coming off of uh, you know the uh, GZ34 feeding uh, the high voltage over here to this unit um, that was the first problem this unit had two 75 ohm resistors in parallel so if you parallel two 75 ohms you kind of get half of that which would I don't know somewhere around what um, 37.5 or so um, so I replaced that with an 80 ohm. The other thing I found is this little red wire right here that connects to this uh, section of the capacitor um, was actually broken. <laughs> I guess it had been snipped somewhere along the way. It was still kind of connected, but um, it was broken right along in here and wasn't making a good connection. So I resoldered that, and uh, as soon as I did that, um, wow, check this out. Um, Yeah, 
any rate, it's uh, playing beautifully now. Um, so sometimes you just got to chase these things down. People, people get in here and mess around, and uh, like I say, there was some really ugly wiring going on here, and I've replaced a lot of it. Um, and the fact that wire, what it was, it was actually broken inside of the um, inside of the the plastic sheath right here. So I guess somebody had been bending it before or something right there. Um, and as soon as I got this in and that, um, got good solid voltage feeding to the capacitor, which by the way um, <laughs> is one of the uh, key elements to the high voltage of these output tubes here. Um, let me show you a little bit about these bias pots. Um, so there's one here and one here. And what they really are, they're kind of bias balance pots. So you're feeding in, um, coming off of this, a negative voltage here um, into this pot. And then it's getting distributed out to this tube and to this tube. And ideally, you would uh, you would buy, adjust this for, uh, you know, for perfect symmetric symmetry between each of these pairs of tubes and you can do that simply by um, you know connecting a voltmeter to either side of the uh, either side and you can see here I've got 43.4 volts on one side being fed out and on the other side here I'm not good at this left hand we've got um, 44.3 so uh, Got a little bit of adjusting to do to get that one in the middle, and uh, you can just kind of use a uh, something here, and you just have to keep turning them down until you uh, kind of get it balanced in between there. It's probably 43.40. See, we go 43.9 right there, and if I go to the other side now. Probably got a similar 44.1. Oh, it's there. I can, I can, looks like I can balance it out at 44 um, volts there on this. And I'll do the same for this. But uh, And then we're going to check it out on the oscilloscope and on the uh, audio analyzer. See how this thing's doing. Okay, let's take a look at what we got going on. Feeding out of the uh, um, the high output on the audio analyzer HP8903B into a mono um, connector. So both channels of this amp here, feeding in the back here, are being driven by the exact same signal. You can see here about a one kilohertz tone. Um, and you can see here we're running, uh, I've got it on percent distortion here. We're running about 0.7% distortion. And I've got this thing jacked up to three, three fourths of volume right now. As you can see here, a nice clean um, sine wave. Thing is just beautiful. No, uh, no noise, nothing on top or bottom of it. Uh, very beautiful. And if I jump up here to the HP3582A spectrum analyzer, you can see the actual um, fundamental uh, signal which we were putting out, which is uh, as it's being read here as one kilohertz. You notice uh, the little position lever here. As I turn it, the little green dot here moves to right and left. And when you get it on top of the marker, it'll tell you, hey, you're at one kilohertz. And you got about 5.7 volts. Um, if we crank this on up a little bit, six, seven. Um, somewhere around there, somewhere around 8 volts, which is uh, about 3 fourths full volume. We start to get way down here on the very bottom a little bitty dip. And if we move the um, marker across, if you'll notice right there at 2 kilohertz, we've got a signal that's about 80 millivolts compared to. 7 volts. So it's a very, very small percentage there, if that makes sense. Um, and if you drop this thing down below 3 fourths volume, I mean, it pretty much disappears. And you can notice over here 0.6% distortion. When I crank it all the way up here and start getting up to where, um, you know, you, 
getting on up here 9, 10 volts or whatever. Starting to get some little bit of a uh, full volume on this thing. 2 hertz, 3 hertz, so you're getting even an odd order harmonics here. And if you'll notice here, the, um, we start to get a little bit over 1% distortion and we get way up there in that range so um, I'm also driving this thing pretty darn hard too if I drop the drive down on it to let's say um, 0.3 volts I was driving at full line level um, just a minute ago now I can crank this thing up all the way pretty much to full volume at this point um, if you'll see here we're getting 8.2 volts drive this thing all the way up to 9 volts basically here and we're just starting to get the slightest little bit of uh, harmonics popping in here and I'll tell you where these are coming from these are coming from the, uh, the circuits that provide tone control um, the bass and treble um, I almost guarantee it even though I've got those things centered totally getting rid of them is uh, darn near impossible um, if that makes sense so uh, Matter of fact, let me show you. I'm going to play with the, watch this, I'm playing with the, uh, the bass knob right now and watch what it's doing to the signal. <laughs> it's changing it drastically, isn't it? That's very interesting. But I'm driving at 100, I mean, at the, the volume knob's completely pegged. That's at about 80% there. Really nice, clean signal. Um, come over here, there's not much of anything. Really happy with how this thing's turning out. Hope, hopefully you're learning something. And uh, yeah, they're at the one kilohertz mark. 8.8. .8, let's just say nine volts on the output there. Okay, we had uh, nine volts on the output there. So nine times nine v squared, right? 81 divided by r, which is an eight ohm load on this thing. And you end up with uh, about 10 watts, and that's about right. Um, good push-pull um, you know EL84 amplifier not being overdriven uh, 12 watts 10 12 watts about what you could be expecting out of this thing you know I'd like to see this number here a little lower than 0.6 but I mean, man that is 0.6 percent distortion I mean you know you buy a good modern amplifier and uh, the specs aren't really any better than that Matter of fact, 1% or 2% wouldn't be bad at all on this thing. And even when I crank the volume wide open, you know, this thing only gets up in the 1.9, 2.0. I mean, that's pegged. As soon as I come off the peg state, it drops back down, kind of the 1.3. And as soon as I go below 3 force volume, it's, it's down here. It's a beautiful sine wave here on the output. You may wonder why we're not hearing this uh, 1 kilohertz tone. That's because I've got the... Um, the switch that I've made here, I've got it set to uh, dummy load on both sides here. Um, and you can flip the flip those down. You can see we've got. Uh, that's why I run these things into a non-inductive dummy load. Um, kind of keeps it from eating your ears up while you're doing this. And uh, you know, the output from this ends up feeding channel one of the oscilloscope. At least my channel two freed up to use down here for testing and purposes or whatnot. Um, the um, the other side of the output here uh, feeds the um, the measurement side of the, uh, um, the audio analyzer as well as feeds up here into the uh, spectrum analyzer. Man, I couldn't be any happier with this thing than uh, than where it's sitting at right now. Beautiful little signal right there. Let's see how it sounds. Okay, a couple things here. We got it flipped upside down, or right side up maybe. <laughs> and we got the, um, so we got all new um, Electro Harmonix 12AX7 tubes here on the front end. I've got a tube socket i got to clean there. Look at that. Interesting. These others seem pretty solid. Um, we'll get that fixed. Anyway, I've got in it the, um, um, the Russian uh, 6N1Ps, um, the, I think it's the EM version, the uh, 
uh, actually the EB version, the, uh, the high output version. And what I did was I pulled these uh, these um, 7189s out. These are all, um, you can see here, old Telefunken um, and Mullard 7189s. So I don't want to burn those up. I'll put those away. And uh, these things are cheap enough. I uh, got a, I think I got a quad of them for thirty-seven dollars or less. I got I got eight of them matched for like seventy some dollars shipped, so uh, pretty cheap. Uh, GZ thirty-four in here, and uh, let's see what we got here. Um, volume turned halfway. It's dead quiet. I don't hear a thing. I get it over here about three fourths, and I start to hear the slightest little, little bitty hum in the back of the speakers, but. Nothing out of the ordinary, nothing not to be expected. Well, I've kind of got the tone knob here and the treble about uh, plus three on it. Same with the bass, plus two and a half or so here. Got the balance in the middle, scratch filter out, the volume on loudness, tape monitor out. Got the equalization on RIAA, which actually takes effect when you got it on the uh, phono section. Got it here in the middle on, um, you know, stereo. And then... Uh, I think I showed you the bass and treble, but uh, we can uh, see if I can get my phone to open up here. And let's see how this thing sounds. quick. All right, let me show you two things we're going to do to clean this thing down in here. It's actually three steps to it. Um, the first step I'm going to do is to actually close these pin holes up. And you know, what you do is you get the ever so smallest of little screwdrivers here. And you kind of get down here on each side of it. Um, really hard to see me do this, but you kind of bend them in. Um, on both sides and close up the gap between these these things that's happened over time with tubes sitting in them and you'll go around and do all eight sides here um, or all eight pins both sides there's 16 of them and then I'll spray a little bit of deoxid down in there to to clean them and then I've got a super fine little bitty uh, like a burring file or whatever that's used for uh, point contacts or something and I'll just go down and around on all those and make sure I get them good and clean. I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, you can see the little file I've got here and I'm just sticking it down in there in each one and kind of working it back and forth. I'm not really grinding on these things hard or filing away. I'm just basically removing any oxidation or uh, something that may have built up on there over time. You never know, something could have spilled down in them. And um, once I've done that, I'll hit it with another little spray of, uh, of kind of deoxid down in here. Actually, hang on one second. Okay. Just clean them, clean down in there real good. Use a um, paper towel to get rid of any excess. Let's see how this thing performs now. I bet you it's better. All right, check this out. Now we can wiggle it, and we still got good contact, just like the other tubes. Remember before, as soon as I touched it, it cut in and out really, really bad. And we can check these back here too, but I think they're all good and solid. I had a Sansui 1000 AM that I was working on for a friend I restored, and that thing drove me absolutely batty, and it turned out it was some corrosion down in one of the tube sockets was on. Uh, causing some problems intermittently and intermittent problems are the toughest to chase down. I will tell you that um, not crazy about the heat that this 2020-2020 uh, 450 capacitor is putting off. It's uh, it's not hot enough. I mean you see I got my hand on it. It's not going to burn me. It's getting a little warm which tells me that it's building up. It's got some internal resistance in it. Um, 
which means it's getting warm because of the resistance. Um, I'll probably end up replacing that at some point, uh, just like I did the uh, the front one here. But I mean, it's working fine, and it's it's getting the it's performing its job. It's just uh, until there's some age to it, and this thing's getting a little bit warm. This one here is cool as can be, no problems whatsoever. It's another way you can tell a capacitor starting to get some age to it. It's just uh, is it producing heat or not. Things sounding great, yes. Let me kill this thing. All right, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Call this done for now. Like I said, this is my personal amp. It's not going anywhere, so I may end up uh, coming along and replacing that at some point here, and I may end up doing it before I take it off the bench. We'll uh, see if I've got some. This is a four section 20 20 20 20 at 450, and I would just have to. Uh, matter of fact, I think I've got some land back here. Um, some 22 microfarad at 450. It would take four of these to build a similar little circuit um, to replace that thing with. We may go ahead and do that. Okay, back on the bench. <laughs> um, you know, I said I was going to replace this capacitor here because it's producing a little bit of heat. Well, interesting. I got to noticing down in here that uh, one of the tabs here, the square one, is not being used at all, and there's a little wire coming off of it that's been cut at some point in time. So I'm like really scratching my head at this point. And uh, let me let me show you over on this other one. So I'm looking at it and the square connection actually has a uh, feed off of it. And if I notice it comes over here and it comes off the first section, basically the high voltage, um, before it ever hits this 80 ohm resistor. So if you remember this thing had been changed to uh, 275 ohms in parallel, so 37.5 ohms, and um, so someone had modified this whole circuit, and I <laughs> it inadvertently only fixed part of it back. So I got to get a wire going from here over to this, and uh, actually put the first section of the um, basically the power supply capacitor filter section right here. Then this would be the second section, which comes off of here. This orange wire here leads to right here, and etc. So basically, we're missing a whole section of uh, capacitance here in uh, smoothing out the ripple on the high voltage. Okay, so in keeping with all original style, I ran an orange wire from here around and over to the, uh, I guess it's pin number, what is that? It's to pin two of this tube socket um, and I can tell you one thing increase the volume significantly which tells me that uh, we've increased the uh, power to the output tubes here some um, huh. It's absolutely crazy how much this thing had been modified, and uh, I'm not sure why somebody even did that. Sounding great. We're going to hook it back up and uh, see how it looks on the meters and whatnot. Once we cut this running um, with the extra section plugged in here, um, I, I realize now why they disconnected this one. Uh, this can cap got started getting extremely hot very quickly, which tells me that section of the cap is uh, is bad. But we got a lot of high internal um, ESR building up heat, and uh, ultimately that uh, must be why they disconnected that section of the cap. So I am going to have to replace this, and I'm, uh, I'm going to start searching for some options real quick. Okay, I've done this many times before. You take four. Um, in this case, 22 microfarad. You're not going to find 20 microfarad capacitors um, anymore these days. It's not a standard value. 
If you'll notice, I took all the um, the negative post here, and I basically just uh, you know tied them together, and I uh, left one leg coming up here so I can connect some things too. But then that gives me the four other legs of the prong, and I'll actually end up laying this thing in there sideways like that, um, and it'll actually fit down in here underneath this section, much like much like these did, um, and make a nice clean area here. All right, we've got it mounted in here. It fits perfectly up underneath this little lip. I had to flatten these wires out. They were twisted so that the um, when the plate goes down it'll sit right there and they'll be fine. But um, now we'll end up connecting up to this thing. Okay, the way this is going to work is um, the first one, the first section on the other cap um, really came off of this midpoint right here and fit over. So what I did was I just picked one of the capacitors, doesn't matter which one, and I started out saying, okay, that is my number one. And then I'll just work my way around with the other connections, kind of either following the schematic or, the, in my case, I'm lucky enough to have another amp over here to play with. And it's in. Um, all soldered in, all eight connection points made down in here. Not the easiest thing to see at this point. Took me about 15 minutes to solder all this in, but it's nice, neat, and tidy. Got the uh, bleeder resistor across it. And also then I can uh, lay a ruler across here where the chassis would go. And you can see I've got a good quarter inch of clearance there, so no worries about um, about any uh, you know, incidental contact or getting too close there. So, All right, we're going to power it on and give it the uh, old smoke test here and see how this thing does. And here we go. Got power. Things pretty quiet. Um, not hearing anything yet. I have a hot water boiler system right on the other side of this wall here, so it kicks on from time to time, being winter time, and makes some noise. And so far, this thing is dead quiet. Let's uh, let's see if I can get the. Oh wow. Sounding great. Let me, uh, it's got a lot more dynamic range now, a lot more volume to it. Let me hook it up now to the, to the uh, test equipment up here and see how it's doing. As you can see here, we've got the 1000 hertz tone. I'm going to kill it with uh, turning the dummy load on. Nice, beautiful sine wave here. Um, by the way, these things here are nice and cool. There's no heat, heat to them whatsoever. Um, Beautiful looking sine wave over here. I'll check it out. 0.3. We're on down there a ways um, from where we were earlier. And if we look over here, nice and clean. Let me crank the volume up on this thing a little bit. So we're going to get it on up here. 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, we're running at 9, roughly 9 volts right there. Um, wow, and uh, way down here at the uh, 100 millivolts compared to the basically 10 volts, 9 volts there. Really clean, 1.5% um, distortion. That's with the volume wide open on this thing. When I turn it down to three quarters or so, um, this thing drops on down here, 0.6. I'm driving it pretty hard too. If I get a 0.25 volts of drive here. 0.5. This thing is beautiful. Yeah, I'll take this all day long. Certainly will. Alright, we're gonna call it a wrap so other than uh, let me let me play one more song through it, make sure it's sounding great. Check the balance and I'll flip it over and uh, make sure all the settings are working well. Okay, here we go. Got treble at about plus three, the bass at plus two. Can't count the bodies anymore. 
anymore The blood and whiskey dance like lovers on the barroom floor These eyes are sore These boots are war They cannot tell the story Traveled far and wide, they speak to me just like the tears of a widowed bride. These guns are lies, the hate has died and never filled the emptiness. Thing is doing beautifully. Um, and guess what? This capacitor nor this capacitor are hot anymore. <laughs> Wonder why, because they've been replaced. At any rate, going to clean this thing up nice and good. Uh, a little bit of stuff on the transformers there. If I'm just, uh, let see, it'll clean up right off. Um, get that cleaned up, get this thing in the cabinet. Thinking about um, getting a wooden cabinet made for this thing and uh, put it in it. At any rate, thanks for watching everybody. I know this has been a long, drawn out one, but uh, as you can see, <laughs> I bought this thing. It was supposedly working, and I've done like, 12 things to it. I fixed a tube socket, replaced this capacitor, replaced this capacitor, rewired a bunch of stuff that had been um, done incorrectly over time, um, to, I guess to try to eliminate and solve other problems. But uh, thanks everybody and uh, we'll keep bringing them to you. Enjoy.